Welcome to Electron Online and now we're going to take a closer look at the concept of impulse and how it relates to momentum. You might have heard, and I've probably said it lots of times if you've listened to me before, that momentum is always conserved no matter what in any collision. No exceptions. So, some of us may have experienced something that seems to violate that rule. For example, let's say it's winter time and we, take up, we pick up a snowball and we throw it at a brick wall and it sticks to the brick wall. Well, before the collision, the snowball, which has mass m, had momentum in the negative direction like that, so we know that the momentum of the snowball was equal to the mass times its velocity, which of course would be negative velocity, and then it hits the wall and it sticks there. And so what is the momentum afterwards? So this would be p initial equals momentum initial, uh, or momentum initials mv initial, and so momentum final is equal to, well, yes, it appears to be zero. So wait a minute. If it had momentum before the collision and after the collision has zero momentum, wouldn't that mean then that momentum is not conserved? Wow, it would at least appear so in the beginning. But really what we need to do is look at the whole system. So really what's going on here is that it's colliding with the wall. And so before the collision, the wall had no momentum. After the collision, the wall and the snowball should have the same momentum combined as what we saw in the beginning that the snowball had. So if the snowball's momentum is not being transferred to the snowball in the wall, because remember what happens when we have another collision, so just to kind of make it seem a little more plausible, let's say that we have an object here with initial velocity, we have an m and v uh, so m1, v1 initial, like that, and so this is m1, and let's say there's a second object, which is m2, and let's say that v2 initial is equal to zero, and they collide, and then after the collision, they then will stick together, and we'll have a common final velocity, v final, and so we can say that momentum initial equals momentum final, and so we can say that m1, v1 initial, plus m2, v2 initial, which of course is zero, because v2 was zero, m2 was not moving, that equals m1 plus m2 times v final. So in the same token, m1 plus m2 v final, that should now also count for the snowball in the wall. And it does. The problem is that the wall is connected to the earth. It's sitting there, solid, cemented in to the earth. And so really, the system is greater than just a snowball in the wall. The system is a snowball and the entire earth. And yes, the total momentum of the snowball and the Earth will be the same before and after the collision, but the Earth is so big with such an enormous mass that no change in velocity can even be seen or measured. There's just no way because the Earth is so much bigger than the snowball that at least it appears that momentum is not conserved, but if you take the wall and the Earth all combined with the snowball, momentum is, of course, conserved. And so we have to keep that in mind when we talk about uh, impulse, because impulse usually involves things hitting a wall and bouncing back, or a baseball getting hit by a baseball bat. So we have to keep in mind that in some cases it may appear that momentum is not conserved when it is. And that's why I want to pay, bring it to your attention that there seems to be this apparent contradiction, which is not really a contradiction at all. If you take the whole uh, universe into account, the whole earth, the wall, and the snowball, momentum, of course, is always conserved.